So we're familiar to the to the office from, from previous uh, uh, hearings, but uh, I just wanted to give that a brief introduction. Now today I wanted to focus on a couple of points. Uh, first, I want to spend a few minutes just reminding all of us about the standards uh, for this proceeding. And this was very well laid out in the initiation notice uh, from the Federal Register, but I think in some of the comments in the back and forth has gotten a little bit lost, and I wanted to underscore a few points uh, there. The Copyright Office in the, in the notice uh, indicated that in order to prevail, the proponents um, have the burden of proof uh, of an exemption, and they must demonstrate distinct, verifiable, and measurable impacts uh, on their uh, purported fair uses. Uh, there must be actual instances of verifiable problems. In order to, to uh, uh, satisfy the likely uh, prong, which is a possibility, uh, as quoted uh, in, the, in the register notice from the uh, manager's report, uh, an exemption based on the likely future adverse impacts during the applicable period should be made only in extraordinary circumstances in which evidence of likelihood is highly specific, strong, and persuasive. Um, and as Dean indicated, that the, the uh, proponent must show that problems uh, justify the exemption in light of all of the relevant facts, including the uh, uh, availability of, of works using the protected uh, format. Uh, identification of uh, isolated or anecdotal problems will generally be insufficient to warrant an exemption. The mere fact that the digital format may be more convenient to use for non infringing purposes is generally insufficient, um, and there must be sufficient harm to warrant an exemption from the default rule. And again, the default was to uh, uphold the, the circumvention uh, prohibition. Um, and uh, the uh, sort of the full range of availability of a work for use is necessary to assess uh, uh, in order for uh, the evaluation of an exemption on the prohibition on circumvention, um, and whether the measure supports a distribution model that benefits the public generally is an important factor. All of those things we think um, are important as, as the Copyright Office examines the, the set of that are before it. Now, with regard to DVD, CCA, uh, and DVD specifically, um, very briefly, DVD, CCA does not object to renewal of the exemption for college and university professors, uh, with all of this obviously with regard to CSS and, and DVDs, uh, renewal of the exemption for students in film studies uh, classes, um, nor a clarification uh, that was requested by librarians and others who may be uh, assisting users uh, um, who are otherwise exempted uh, for their use. Uh, we did uh, suggest some perhaps clarification on some of the, the, the exemptions and we would, we would uh, direct the, the office to our written comments on that. In, in the context of this uh, panel, uh, we do object to the extension of the exemption to all college and university students and the extension of the exemption to uh, K through 12 uh, teachers. Um, fundamentally, we believe that the alternatives that are available for those users and uses uh, are fully sufficient to meet the, the needs that have been identified. Uh, the screen capture software, uh, I would point to specifically the demonstration that was here on May 11th uh, by a teacher from the Bullsville High School uh, in Montgomery County, uh, also a public school, I would note. Um, uh, who demonstrated the use of the uh, replay video capture software where it was uh, evident that it works easily, integrates. He integrated uh, the presentations that he made, uh, uh, copy, the clips that he made into the teaching software that he's provided for his classroom. Uh, it allowed, it, and the screen capture software uh, integrated very well with that. Um, he was able to record exactly the segments that, that he wanted. Um, the uh, quality, he, as he pointed out, uh, even some of the fine features uh, of the All the President's Men uh, video where there was a, a scene where there was a focus in the, in the foreground and a focus in the background and, and in between uh, deliberately a more fuzzy picture. 
the screen capture software was able to pick up that distinction. Um, and uh, as we've seen on, uh, uh, from Dean's presentation, there are testimonials from other um, uh, teachers and professors. Um, the uh, recording of the screen uh, by the smartphone, uh, as we've demonstrated, uh, has, uh, particularly when you add some of the, the easily available video uh, editing software, is easy to use, and uh, uh, the quality is certainly acceptable. The visual details are clear, the subtitles were clear, uh, the, video, the audio was in sync with the video, um, and uh, I think the smartphones uh, that, are, that are available are, are certainly uh, well within the reach of uh, many ordinary consumers, as Dean's uh, indicated, there are going to be hundreds of millions of them in consumer hands uh, shortly. Um, Nick Singer's demonstration at the uh, May 11th uh, demo also showed how bookmarking can be done with online um, uh, uh, streaming uh, services, and uh, so that's available as well. And as to cost, um, the video capture software that we uh, demonstrated uh, costs less than $40. Uh, smartphones, are, as I said, are, are things that are available to many millions of Americans. Um, and easy to use, high quality video editing uh, software is less than $50. Um, the, um, as to the legality issue, I would um, state that the DVD CCA concurs in the statements that uh, Dean made with regard to ACSLA and its conclusions with regard to the uh, screen capture uh, and the DMCA. Um, Thank you, good morning, I'm Steve Metallis. I'm pleased to be here on behalf of seven national organizations uh, of the joint creators and copyright owners. Uh, uh, I, I think, uh, I'm glad that you're having this hearing, that you've broken up the hearing the way that you did. We feel that uh, the uh, three streams that are, that are encompassed right now and the existing exemption really ought to be unpacked. They present very different uh, uh, issues, and in this case, uh, the main issue here is not is less whether the use that's being made or sought to be made by circumvention is non-infringing, uh, and more a question of whether there are alternatives that don't require infringement that enable that use to be made. Um, uh, Bruce has already summarized the points about the uh, burden of persuasion in this proceeding, the fact that it's de novo, and uh, the position of the joint creators and copyright owners is similar to what Bruce just mentioned, uh, if you concur, if you believe that the uh, proponents have made, met their burden in this de novo proceeding, uh, we would not have a, an objection to a simple renewal of the existing uh, exemption as it applies to the, uh, uh, the post-secondary education. Uh, we do have very strong concerns about expansion of it to cover not just the D, but all um, access control formats for motion pictures, which is some of what's uh, proposed here. We're concerned about extending it to all students. We're concerned about extending it to all educational levels. Um, we're concerned in particular with number uh, eight, the proposal to cover all educational uses. That is quite different from the much more expansive than what is covered by the existing exemption which deals with books for classroom use. And uh, I just want to mention that because two of the proposals before you refer to audiovisual works rather than just motion pictures. We heard, I think, for the very first time today, two examples uh, from Ms. Hobbs of uh, a request involving uh, video games, which of course are also audiovisual works. I think we need to know a lot more about, I don't understand what circumvention was needed in order to make the uses that she was describing, so maybe that will uh, be explained later. Uh, so if, you, if we look back at what has changed over the last three years since we were all here together in this room, similar proposals. Uh, let's, let's look at, at what has changed both in terms of the proponents claimed need to circumvent and in terms of, of our position that there are alternatives available. I think if you look through the materials and the, uh, the, the written submissions and the testimony, you're going to see a lot of examples where, uh, yes, perhaps it could be done better in high definition and move, move beyond the 
you see almost no evidence that it's really necessary to do that. Um, and of course, this uh, the office has long maintained in accordance with the, the, the applicable law that this proceeding is not about uh, enabling access to not to uh, works in the favored format or the particular format of necessarily the preferred format, but in, into whether there is really any substantial burden on the on infringing use. So when you uh, Take an example such as uh, from, from Professor from the AAUP submission of using a Zoolander film to compare that with Chaucer. That was fine in 2009 to do it on DVD. Somehow it has now become intolerable to limit this to DVD. High definition would be needed. I'm not sure that they've made that case. Uh, I, I think the, the Library Copyright Alliance was very candid in its reply comment when they said that with the we're dealing with here uh, is always going to be a subjective feeling by the uh, would be circumventor that circumvention is needed. And their point was, uh, was, from their point of view, objectively, it is always needed in every single educational setting. So that's really kind of a meaningless uh, uh, limitation on the existing exemption. Uh, and I, I think, again, I, I understand why, it, why uh, educators want to have the option to to circumvent uh, the high definition, but I don't think that they presented compelling uh, arguments that would meet their burden on why that is that is necessary. Um, it, it, you know, we made it high. Uh, Jonathan's argument is: if we made it high quality for a reason, everyone should be entitled to circumvent in order to obtain that high quality. We also, uh, the industry has also used access control for a reason, and that reason was well spelled out. In this is an important uh, uh, element in making more material more available in more ways to more people in more formats and at more price points than ever before. And that <coughs> access controls, robust access controls, are a key element of that. And so we're quite concerned about proposals to allow potential millions of people to, uh, to circumvent those access controls. Um, I think that, uh, Dean has already uh, uh, discussed the Death of DVD is uh, those reports are somewhat exaggerated, as, as Mark Twain might have said. Um, uh, I'll just briefly mention the, the issue of expansion to allow all students, including uh, K through 12 students, if you uh, amass these proposals together, uh, to, to uh, perform circumvention. I don't think, again, that a compelling case has been made or a persuasive case has been made that that's necessary. Uh, we we're told that students are really teachers. Uh, that's the AAP submission, which I'm sure will come as a surprise to the members of that, that trade union who uh, think that teachers actually have some privileges that perhaps students don't have. Uh, but uh, I, I don't think a persuasive case has been made. Uh, as far as the, 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 um, the, the K through 12 uses, uh, I think uh, um, we had some, some, uh, some, some good testimony on that today, but I, I think Mr. Paulus' testimony Teachers use VHS because the timeliness of the use is more important than the quality of the use in their setting. Or the quality of the reproduction in that setting, I think, is, is, is indicative of whether, you know, I think that's, that, that's important to, to consider and whether they have the burden of showing that they need to be able to circumvent uh, digital materials. And as far as what comes out in the classroom, well, we now have the battle of the high school social studies teachers, and you, you saw the presentation. Poolsville High School and, and uh, New Trier is a much bigger high school than Poolsville and I think it was useful to get the students' reactions, uh, but I, I think you have to decide whether that really meets the burden of the uh, I'll, I'll just say briefly on the other side, a lot has changed from uh, uh, in terms of the available alternatives. You've already heard about the improvements in camcording, the accessibility of that, uh, improvements in video editing and in screen capture. This is a lot different than years ago. I think the big change is what is available commercially now. Uh, in terms of the clip sites, um, uh, movie clips has a, uh, lots of available clips and teachers are able to create PowerPoint presentations with embedded links to clips. They can start at a particular point and move seamlessly between presentation slides without any class interruptions. Obviously that doesn't cover all titles, but again, this is a service that was not available at all three years ago. It's growing. 
finally, the ultraviolet presentation that you had here on May 11th, and that was discussed as well in LA on May 17th, I think is a real game changer in this uh, environment. Um, if you, uh, it, it really enables a lot of real-time access, or downloaded access in many cases, to uh, this material in high-definition format, uh, 1080 pixel format. Thousands of titles are available today through, through Voodoo, um, and if you look at how this is this is developing, the whole disk to digital um, uh, process, which is started at, at, at the world at the nation's and world's largest retailer now, and is soon going to be available in the home. This will, in, in, over time, this is and uh, probably not very much time. This is going to narrow the gap between the number of titles that are available on DVD and the number of titles that are available through this type of ultraviolet <coughs> service for the kinds of classroom uses that are being proposed here. Because uh, virtually every DVD title over a relatively short period of time will be available in this, in this digital copy format that enables the kinds of uses that Mitch Singer demonstrated here on May 11th. I think that's the real change in terms of alternatives that show that exemption uh, is probably less needed now than it was three years ago and certainly shows why the expansion of the exemption that the proponents are calling for should not be accepted. Thank you. Thank you. So I just want to ask one question about the last thing you said. Um, maybe I need to go back and look at what happened on the 11th again. But with ultraviolet, does that include the ability to take clips from the copy that you've made? and use them in the ways that some of the folks on this side of the uh, room want to do that? It includes the ability to queue up um, what you, uh, okay. yeah. Uh, yeah. the titles, and start them here, and That's right. go to another title and start it there. So functionally, I think the answer is yes, but in fact, I don't think specific, I don't think uh, the actual clips are made. Okay. Um, before we get to general questions and answers, uh, I'd like to ask the folks on this side of the room if you have one or two minutes worth of response. And by response, I mean actual response to what was just said by any of the opponents. Renee, you're taking Yeah, one time. thing I'd like to talk about is why um, clip websites are not good enough. Um, and this, uh, as much as we, as much as we appreciate the, the value of clip websites, it turns out that careful selection and curation of audiovisual works is um, part of the responsibility of the teacher in uh, using audiovisual materials in the classroom. If you and I were to watch a movie and decide which excerpt we want to make, we'd probably pick different in points and different out points because the choice of in point and out point, the cho choice of what clip to use is in fact a pedagogical decision. You're going to make that choice based on the students, based on your learning objectives, based on the context. So, so clip um, websites are inherently inadequate to the important choices that an <coughs> educator makes about using audiovisual materials in the classroom. Are you saying they're inadequate because you can't necessarily get the clip you want, that they don't cover everything? Is, is that the point? Because the choice of where to begin the clip and where to end the clip is a pedagogical choice that's based on the needs of the learner. And by <coughs> definition, the clip compilation website has a choice made by someone else. And, and while sometimes that choice might be okay, right, or even good, many other times that clip choice will be not appropriate, right? It'll, it'll be too long, it'll be too short, it will start in the wrong place, it'll end in the wrong place. Okay, let me ask the folks on this side of the table who know more about these clip sites, if you can respond to that. I have no idea how they work. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'll give a shot at that. I mean, I think um, what Renee has said, as far as my knowledge of the sites, is accurate in terms of that that the sites do not provide a teacher or a user to select whatever clip that they would like to from a particular motion picture and select their particular start and stopping points that the clip services have, if you will, pre-formatted clips um, that, that are loaded onto those services. But the clip services are offered as just one means of satisfying the needs for pedagogy. Educational uses. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and and, uh, and and I think when it comes to the need to select very particular p 
pieces of a motion picture. Um, there are always these other alternatives of using video capture software or simply queuing up the, the uh, DVD or Blu-ray to the point that you want it, and either showing it in the classroom or if you're making <coughs> compilations, simply recording it off computer screen or television screen using a tablet, smartphone, video camera, etc. So we didn't we we have not regarded the clip licensing services as the be all and end all for answering all educational needs. Anything else that any of you want to respond? Yes, Peter. Um, so I think the, the bigger issue uh, with the clip licensing services isn't that um, choosing a starting end date, which I think is an issue, is that it's, right now it's a tiny, tiny percentage of material that's available. Maybe in the future it'll be, it'll be a real alternative. Right now it definitely isn't. We actually did a study which we didn't include. We looked at 100 courses that use um, video, these video clips, and actually a tiny percentage of them were represented of the clips. Fewer than a third were, um, were clips that were owned by a major studio. The kind of people that participate in the clip licensing services. So um, at least 75% of them were licensed by independent or owned by independent um, copyright owners. Um, the smartphone demonstration, let me just address it really quickly. Sure. Um, <coughs> I mean, I was obviously pretty bad, I thought, but, but more technically, uh, it's very choppy and jumpy. Um, the framing was off, um, even some of the, um, I think it was hard to read some of the, um, the subtitles. It was very flat, the image was muted, there was a lot of color bleed from one to another. Um, Mr. Turnbull said that the sound was the same, but in fact it was silent, uh, and so it's not clear that the sound was distorted or not. Um, it's a little more pixelated. Those are just a few of the issues you can see in it. If you look at it again, you want it. Um, managed copying, uh, we've been hearing about for a long time, and it does sound interesting, but uh, there's no evidence that there's even a, um, an agreement on format for managed copying, let alone technology that will allow for managed copying. Um, I think it's vaporware for now, uh, but it may not be in the future. Um, and then we talked a little bit about screen capture, um, and we talked, talked a little about the, and we all talked about some of the uh, technical problems with screen capture. Um, but I was really interested to hear um, Mr. Marks say for the first time that screen capture was not uh, a form of decryption. Because for the first time, actually, today I'm realizing that screen capture may, in fact, uh, require decryption. Um, because uh, it can be blocked by, uh, by some sort of copy protection. We saw it in, um, uh, in Renee Hobbs' discussion of, ne of Netflix that Netflix, through certain browsers perhaps, can definitely block some screen capture programs. So it may be that screen capture can be blocked by technical protection measures in the same way that other kinds of uh, decryption programs are. Which would require, obviously, some kind of a copy of um, you know, certain mention in order to get around. Any other responses? Yes, sir. Uh, <coughs> I just want to um, make a comment about smartphones. Um, that, was a, that was an interesting argument, but if we imagine that the exemption was formally expanded to include all students, um, depending on the teacher, the presence of phones in the classroom can cause some problems. So, and some schools even don't allow students to have phones in the classroom and do text messaging. So, um, I have colleagues that prohibit that in the classroom. And so um, thinking about expanding it and like teaching in the classroom, using smartphones could cause some problems and all students also don't have them, although many of them do. The other thing about the smartphones is that that would make it more likely that these um, clips that could be created with that would be disseminated over the web. So it seems like not a very realistic example because if you're, if you're doing something in a, in a kind of a confined digital it seems like we have a lot more control over how it's disseminated and that it's not as, when something's on someone's phone, I mean, we hear all kinds of stories about inappropriate content that's disseminated with smartphones and so forth. So I think that could actually cause a lot of problems if we were, if that was to be a legitimate um, solution. The other thing is that I, when I listen to the, um, the individuals testifying on the other side of the aisle, I thought that it seemed like they said pretty much that they didn't have objection to removing the exemption they already had. So I'm just, we met our vote. Okay, uh, Marquis, uh, Renee, you um, I just want a small comment <coughs> on, um, on Steve's point about how surprised he was that um, students are now teachers and that uh, somehow the new instructional uh, techniques that where students essentially 
uh, create media as part of the learning experience are somehow inferior or inadequate. Um, in fact, it was John Dewey al almost 100 years ago that said if you really want to learn something, the best way to learn it is by constructing something. So that when students actually put together their own um, a piece of video, when they make their own critical commentary, that's when they learn best. I think it's really important to understand that that's not a new uh, instructional strategy. It's in fact quite an established part of teaching and learning in the 20th century, and in, in no way represents an abrogation of a professor or teacher's responsibility. Okay. Uh, if I could add to that, uh, Along, along with what Renee's talking about creation, Bloom's taxonomy is something that is valued in the classroom when we talk about progressive teaching, evaluation, synthesis, analysis. And Bloom's taxonomy has actually been revised by many to include creation because as students are able to create, then they're able to better decode media around them. These are critical learning skills we want our students to have. Again, I'll go back to the smartphone thing I wanted to mention one more time. Smartphones are very expensive. They appear to be cheap. They appear to be ubiquitous, but they you know, always incur these monthly charges. Not every kid does have access, and it is still a real-time capture. It is not a file you could just create or rip off of a DVD. It takes time to do that, and sometimes people don't have that time. And for the argument of queuing up a DVD, before a classroom begins. Uh, I guess uh, some people have never taught a class uh, in which you have to share rooms with others where you don't have your own room. And time, again, is of the essence. Yeah, I just wanted to respond to the, the, the point about uh, uh, why the, the importance of having the, the highest quality work, especially if that is the way it is dis distributed. Um, uh, when you're teaching something, you're teaching the thing. You're not teaching a shadow of the thing. And so um, uh, it is important to, there, there is a value of having authenticity. So, you know, it's, it's obviously it's always better to study something in the original language if you can. Now, if the students don't understand the original language, you have to study in the translation. But if you can study in the original language, that is better uh, from an educational point of view. And if you're able to study the real work, the work is distributed, that is better than you know, uh, studying the camcorded version or the smartphone copied version. Uh, it's just not the same work. Uh, and, and there is an importance to the authenticity and the integrity of looking at the original work as opposed to some derivative of it. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, before we, what we're going to do, we're going to go to questions, we're going to take a break before that, but before we do that, any of you have anything in response to what we just heard from any folks on this side of the table, now's the time to do that. Steve? Uh, you know, just briefly on, on Jonathan's last point. I mean, I think the, the, the office has kind of been down this road before, and <coughs> as I, I understand from a theoretical perspective what what he, what John is saying, I, I know he the best evidence rule in court, in, in federal courts. Um, but the fact is, first of all, uh, if we're talking about uh, works in high definition format, today those works are available on DVD. Uh, as Hobbs said, in many cases, DVD is the only format that's available, but even, certainly for almost everything that's available in the higher definition formats, it's also available on DVD, and that is no less the work than the, than the high definition format. So I, I, I think, uh, I don't think that that, that that takes it very far, but I think that the office has also having had to go through this in other contexts has made it clear that, that just as the federal courts have said that fair use does not mean that you're entitled to, to have access to work in any, in any your favored format or to take your, your, uh, your camp order to the movie theater so that you can actually go back and look at it while you're, you know, to write up your criticism. Um, similarly, uh, uh, it's been quite consistent throughout this proceeding in the past years that you're not entitled to your favorite format necessarily if there are alternatives that enable you to make the non-infringing use without, for example, circumventing high definition. I, I just wanted to make two very, very brief remarks. Um, one about the video capture software to uh, 
to, to clarify for, for what, what Peter had said, when we examined it and when we had it tested, we were finding that the video capture software was capturing the images and the audio after they had been decrypted. And that's why we concluded that, in fact, they are not circumvention devices. And so I can't tell you why it didn't work for that teacher on Netflix, but when we tested it, it was working to both off of optical disk and off of streaming services. So I just wanted to um, clarify that that point, and uh, I, think that was, I think that was it for now. Bruce, I can uh, address the smartphone. Uh, two things. One, um, the reference I made to the uh, audio sync was to the May 11th demonstration, which where the audio was played and was part of the demonstration was in sync. Um, secondly, with regard to the presence of phones in, in the classroom, there are a couple things. Um, one, one can, that, that is a choice that has been made um, by the institution. I understand the choice, but it doesn't negate the fact that the, the use of the smartphone uh, for video recording would be an alternative uh, to circumvention and also doesn't necessarily need to be used in class, uh, the context in which, which we had vision that frankly was not in class, was, was as part of homework or whatever, but even if it's an in-class assignment for that particular day, for that particular use, uh, one could imagine an exception uh, being made. Um, and I, I guess I don't understand the more likely to disseminate. I, I think the, uh, I, I don't see how a, a smartphone uh, video is any more likely to be disseminated than a file on a computer. I don't understand that. Okay, we got two responses yeah. over here. Um, I just <coughs> want to say that um, with, the, with the issue about playing the smartphone, I mean, I'm really frightened if you were to see that as a legitimate um, solution because I think I've read articles about people being arrested in movie theaters for videotape, you know, using their smartphones to record actually parts of the movie. I just don't think that's something I want to encourage my students to do it because when they do it in one forum, then they're going to do it in any forum. So I just think it's dangerous. I, I don't think Clear. I don't think they were suggesting you go into a movie yeah, theater. Today. No, but I mean, but if you teach them, use your smartphone to take movies, then, except when you're here and don't do it there, and then it gets really confusing, so I don't know. Right, no, and I, I just want to echo Martin Martin's point. I mean, it, it just seemed, well, one of the most amazing things in the last round was when the MPAA, you know, showed people how to camcord off of a, of a DVD, and some, someone actually recorded that and it was uploaded on the internet, and it made sort of a mockery of the MPAA, and this whole, you know, this, this, the whole notion here of, like, so we're encouraging people to camcord in this situation and not in that situation. You know, here you have a bunch of educators who want to do the right thing, who want to get high quality material to their students, and especially in the K-12 uh, situation. And in response to people, you know, dedicated teachers who really are spending a lot of time and really trying to do, put together high quality stuff, you're saying, no, 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 use your smartphone, hold it up. I mean, it, it just, it's, it, I just don't get it. Why do, you, why do you want to make things difficult? Make it easy, encourage them, help the, help the students. I'd just like to respond in, in, in two respects to that. First of all, using, ex taking advantage of an exemption to circumvent is only limited to fair uses. And so if the student decides to circumvent the entire movie, and put it up on the internet, the student has also engaged in legal activity. So we should not confuse this issue by saying that exemptions somehow give everybody a blank check. And in fact, that is precisely the concern of, I would say, ACSLA, DVD CCA, and the joint commentators is that as exemptions are perceived as blank checks for anybody to circumvent content for any purpose, and the entire piece of content to upload to the internet, it actually makes a mockery of technical protection measures. So there's a very careful <coughs> balance that needs to be achieved here. The second point, which I've forgotten from the first time around, is that I think assembling clips for use in an educational setting um, requires time, whether you're going to record off a screen in real time or frankly access the unencrypted file have to go through it and select clips. There is time required to, to do that. I don't frankly know how much more time it is 
to record off screen in real time versus accessing an unencrypted file. But I, I don't think it's accurate to think that one takes five minutes and the other takes four hours. So. Let's take a break now, and we will be back at 11 o'clock sharp. 12 o'clock? 11. Can you imagine? Sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 y